Welcome to Let's Talk About Gay Stuff. Woo! Let's talk about gay stuff. Let's talk about gay stuff. Okay, we're not Oprah. You got anything, Kendall? Mm-mm, that was gay enough. <laughs> this is a podcast where we talk about gay stuff and discuss the week in LGBT history. We are Thomas. Tony. Kendall. Howdy. Uh, and this week we're going to review the week of September 15th through... Oh, that's wrong. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> We're going to review, uh, right, this is last week's notes, come on, on. It's in our notes. we're going to review September, the week of September 22nd through September the 28th, and we'll be discussing Modern Family, uh, the court case Kentucky v. Wasson, and we'll be talking about Oliver Sipple. See, Kendall and I don't use notes, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I, I, I'm, we just wing we're it. Just educated. I'm like an old manager used to say, S-L-O-W. Uh, so, uh, was, I feel like it's been forever since we last were on these mics, but uh, it's only been a week. So what's going on? What, how was the week? I kind of agree. My week was kind of long. So even though it was a week, it seemed like longer. You came back from Denver today. I did. Yeah. I was kind of late to the podcast tonight for our listeners because I have this crazy Uber driver. What happened? So I get in, he's awesome. He starts chit chatting. I'm like, you know, blah, blah. So I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, oh, got to rush you home. The doctor's flying in. I'm like, who's this doctor? He goes, this lady loves me so much. She wrote a letter to Lyft, and we do it through the app so that if we get stuck, there's roadside assistance. We get in an accident, there's insurance. But he goes, she only lets me drive for her. I was like, okay. So then we're driving, and he, I'm like, so where are you from? You know, what's your story? Because I always talk to my Lyft drivers. And he's like, oh, I have this crazy ex-girlfriend. He's like you know, on and on, like they dated for like three months only, but she like has been in and out of jail like 50 times because she's an heiress to a diamond mine in uh, um, Canada. So she doesn't have to work and all this stuff. Like, (laughs) okay, you know, and he's just on and he's like, I think I have the restraining order in my glove box. And so he's like, but then she's the one that like will stand outside of his house and she's, and so then we're like coming down and we're like in, Not the middle lane, but, like, one to the left, and we should be in the immediate right, like, right when we're by my house. And I'm thinking, like, I hate to be a backseat driver, so I'm never, like, hey, get in the right lane. Because I'm, like, let them use the app. I don't want to confuse them. I'm like that all the time. Like, you should turn here. See, (laughs) but then I'm, like, if they're – Because a lot of my Lyft drivers are new to Houston, so I'm, like – My star rating actually has gotten a lot better since I stopped riding with you, (laughs) Kendall. But anyways, Tony. Yeah. So anyways, he passes my exit, and he goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. He goes, I just get so passionate when I talk about her and everything. And so I think he does – He and he even admitted he does kind of want to end up together. But, like, literally, her parents – He wants to end up with this woman who he has a restraining order on? Yeah, I mean, it's love. He does love her. And so, like, literally, she's in jail, right? Like, we passed the jail, and he goes, she's there right now. I was like, what happened? He goes, her parents are in the 70s, and she lives with the parents. She also has a 7-year-old. She lets the 7-year-old do whatever. And so, anytime the the grandparents who are in their 70s, like, try to discipline, she gets a taser out. So, she takes this taser out for her, like, 70-year-old parents, and so they had to call the cops. (laughs) The woman or the daughter, like the little girl. The woman, no. Okay, I thought it was the seven-year-old. No, like if, if the grandparents like go to discipline the little kid. Ah, uh, yeah, she's the heiress to a diamond mine. Mm-hmm. And she lives with her, so she doesn't have to work. Yeah. So who's the crazy one? The woman in jail or your Lyft driver? Oh, they're both. Yeah, <laughs> they're both. Or yeah. the passenger. Wow. I know. Thank you. I'm listening and believing the story. <laughs> Did you make it home? I guess you made it home because you're here. Made it home. Say, yeah. oh, he was great. Like you know, I actually enjoy l- rides like that because it keeps it, it keeps life interesting. It d- you know, it it's not like uh, some Joe Schmo. No, I'm that guy on the phone the whole time. Like I'm catching up on my news. Oh no, like, I love I don't talking want them to, to them. Talk to me, I don't. Oh, see, I love talking yeah. to them. I love like because every one of them, like, where are you I from? I volunteer to sit in the trunk. <laughs> oh, just I love to talking to the them. Way. No way. Spencer will talk because he's Canadian, and so he can't not talk. So he just starts getting in conversations. I'm like, why are you guys talking? But see, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, but do they know? understand Canadian? No, that it's a different. They. This is in here, bud. I don't know what you're talking about over there. They speak in <laughs> tongues. But anyways, um, yeah. So anything happened for you this week, Kendall? Pookie Butt Tiny Baby Asian's back. For he's back. Oh, all right. He is just like he's napping on the couch right now. So he is awake, he close had, to napping. He had a great uh, retreat and that he helped lead in Bali. He looks very yeah. refreshed. Yep, yep, yep. So that's uh, that's fun. So he's glad doing a handstand the- right now. That's how he sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> how yoga sleeps in his handstand. Anything else? Like any bats. other things happen this week, 
Kendall? Oh, we're not talking about anything else. Okay. I I sent you a text this no week, Kendall. No whatever story. Yes, uh, but we're going to do that. This is going to be separate. I keep trying to get him to do a separate podcast of on his Whataburger, Whataburger stories. stories. Yeah. Tales from a Whataburger. Uh, but uh, he isn't he hasn't bit at that one. So you just have to Cuz I'm there a lot is what he's saying. Try to Yeah, you But you always have good stories from there. <laughs> About Diet Coke and training for the... Well, the, about uh, the guy patrons. that's like... Homeless people. Oh, God, this guy totally wants me to like do his help him, but I'm not. And then he calls the guy. He's like, oh, I totally want to help you, but my wife won't let me. Oh, <laughs> you should actually take screenshots of those and then put them on Twitter so people can follow you and read them there. An idea. <laughs> or just go to your local Whataburger and hope I'm there. <laughs> <It's gonna> do, <laughs> or gonna everybody's sign. local Very Whataburger mysterious. is going to have similar stories. You're, you're going to sign autographs. Every Whataburger, Whataburger is going to have a cardboard cutout. So of I me. think the moral of the story is if you're really bored and want to spice up your life, go to Whataburger, sit, have a Diet Coke, and when, just listen. When, I don't even eat there. When Kendall uh, writes his book and goes on a book tour, he's going to do signings at uh, Whataburger. No, his line. book tour can be like my my lonely days at Whataburger. Oh, they were lonely. No, he has he's made friends. Days. <laughs> he's, Remember, I don't want to talk to the Uber drivers. Yeah, he just stays alone. I actually liked, I mean, I don't like to do it at Whataburger, but I like to go and hang out like at coffee shops and stuff and just kind of, that's where I work. Yeah, I don't get coffee, time. so I get a huge Whataburger Diet Coke, sit there and just stare at people and wish I could afford to eat the food. <laughs> you must have been there when I sent you that text, though. I sent you a text. I was at a networking event and all of a what sudden was this, text this, message. Text. this woman says, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> that coffee's <laughs> getting to me. It was just like, oh was she God. leading the group? She said it out loud. It was Wait, just was like, she leading the group? No, she was just oh. a participant. She but said it, it out like, loud? What did people yeah, say? Nothing. I mean, <laughs> me and the a guy I was talking to, we walked off and we're like, well, that was a little bit too much information. Uh, but yeah, it was Was it because of, it was unladylike? Well, it was just, I don't think it's unladylike. I remember I was at getting a haircut one time, and the, the one of the hairstylists was like, oh, my stomach hurts. I got to go to the bathroom real bad. And it's just like, why do people share that? Yeah, just like, let well, me go to the restroom. Uh, yeah. yeah. David Sedaris, my favorite author of all times, said he, his uh, hairdresser when he was little went to the bathroom and came back, and when she started cutting his hair again, he smelled Shit. Gross. She had not washed her hands. What? And he was too shy and gay and polite to say anything. So he's like, uh, her hands are like right by his eyes and nose and mouth. Well, that's Did why I told you guy? that. You get disgusted about that stuff. Like you're like, no, one, he doesn't want to know about anyone going poop or, you know, passing gas. Like that is not a thing. Like you can't do that around Kindle. One time I remember we were, you remember it was you, me and Martha. We were out in, uh, uh, in the, the, the Blue Ridge Mountains. And uh, that we'd stop to go to like the rest area. Uh, it was in the park, and some guy who you were like, oh, he was cute, but then he farted really loudly out in the gross. middle of nowhere, and Kendall was just disgusted by him. He was like, oh my gosh, that guy's so gross. It was just like, well, and here we are talking about it. If you can't fart the podcast, fart loudly in uh, in the woods, where can you? I mean, I'm I, I'm there with you. Like that's not topics I want to discuss. Not a bear. But I just he wasn't a bear. No, I just figured that would have been you were gonna enjoy that during your Whataburger days of talking bad poo. Um, I got another story though. This was what a happened? little, a little, a little sad. So I get this email on Wednesday, uh, like s- seven in the morning, and so I read it. Don't pay anything. Like I didn't read it too c- carefully. Then I go back, and it's it came through my the Economy Works website, and so which is my business, right? And so I. Uh, I get it, and I don't get a lot of emails through there because most of the stuff I'm like they're directly through emails, they're not through the website. Anyways, it's this reporter saying, "Hi, I'm with uh, the Turkish Turkish News Network, and uh, I want to do an interview. We we're doing a, a story on the gig economy, and we know you're an expert in the area, so we'd like to talk to you about no it." No way, that's awesome. And I was like, "What? What? Wait, is you this? have to wait." I was like, "What is this?" And so I like showed it to Spencer when he when he woke up and I was like, is this a thing? And he's like, well, yeah. So I wound up responding to the, the note and I was like, okay, well, I guess it's nowhere. Like I figured it was a scam, but I did all my, my due diligence from a cybersecurity standpoint. Cause I was like, all right, don't click on any links that are, you know, that yeah. look malicious. I researched the person who was sending it. When you I send reser- the money, it was Western Union. I, re- I researched the network. Like, this person had a LinkedIn profile and a Twitter oh, yeah, profile. So, yeah. so I was like, it's legit. So I responded. And uh, and then I got a response back like a couple hours later saying we'd want to do something with you in the morning, which they're in Turkey. So I was like, well, mm-hmm. your morning, my morning. Um, we had a couple of uh, like maybe two more email exchanges. And like, we want to do an interview with you so at 12. Turkish accent. 
Well, no, this is over email. Oh. And so we want to do an interview with you at 12. Here's the angle. So it's like nine o'clock at night. And yeah, I really wanted a glass of wine because it had been a week already. But I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this. So I get like, I'm like skeptical the whole time. Like, is this going to And this happen? was like Skype or just call? Well, they said it was going to be Skype. So I was just like, okay. And just because of my, so you put your suit on. my, my anal retentiveness, I was like, where are the instructions? Give me the timeline. Do I need to call in 15 minutes before? Like, what's the deal? So I get none of that. So it's like 1130 coming on. And I'm like, this isn't really going to happen because they would have like sent me an email back. And I'm waiting. And Spencer's like, are you going to get dressed? And so oh. I got dressed. I put oh. on a shirt. And oh, coat. you did full Did makeup. they call? Huh? Did they call? No, they never called. That so is the we had story. we had a light on and everything like because we, we were like we were testing uh, so when I was just looking Wait at my a computer minute. like my I was like my face was on there because we were testing the video like to see if it was gonna work. I'm never going to that and it never, newspaper's and website ne- again. They never fuck called. those assholes. I was like so sad. They wanted to talk about the gig economy, which I was like yeah, I was for. But why did they? What were they wanting to talk about? And California passed a a law um mm-hmm. this past, or what well, do you think it process. was legit and they just never contact you back or they stole your identity somehow well that's why i was worried i was telling spencer i was like i'm not clicking on any skype links unless i like you know, check the the you know the yeah. legitimacy yeah, of it definitely but i never not, well that's why i was like are they going to steal my identity through you know <laughs> through a skype call uh or through facetime or whatever but they they didn't i mean i because i never we never engaged anything i never clicked anything yeah. so uh, but yeah, they wanted to talk about. You may have just dropped off the radar, but that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Why would they? But it was so un- like I was frustrated because. But I know how news goes, right? If but you never know where they found your thing, and it was probably legit. But they would like, have done a pre-interview anyway. The well, whole thing was shady from the good. Well, that's what. It, but they did put. Here's our angle. The Cal- California just passed this gig economy law. And it was an intern, deal. and so she's been executed. But, <laughs> but I was like, okay, well, you know, and the news goes like I said, things are breaking. So I I know some, but it was just like there was no organization which you know most companies and businesses run like that so i was like okay but i was wondering like how they found out about me because i'm like i did you don't search google gig no but it's like Thomas somebody Lopez. shared something but you had your job wondering. listing on grinder i was well this is true uh, and i do have global reach on that uh, and your social no, security number so they no, all they need to do is steal it from i was you. wondering if they found out about us from the podcast though because we have Maybe. listeners in Turkey, and Spencer was like, no, that's not a thing. I was like, we have listeners around the globe. Yes. What up, Zimbabwe? France, yes. Uh, so UK, South Africa. Yeah. Thank you. So, so I was like, well, love you Tennessee. listeners. Love you listeners. They, they heard about Economy Works, and they were like. New hey. Mexico and old Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> So that was my my week. I, like I was all I was I'm like I was skeptical the whole time, but then it was like I felt I'm, I knew as soon as I put that shirt and coat on, I'm like, this is gonna be stupid. Like it's yeah. not it's not gonna happen. And then God. I'm gonna have a story. And the to gays tell. have been through enough. It was I so know. sad. But anyways, God, we've well, had crazy weeks. Luckily, we're here, and let's get into our topics. Another right. sad story. Speaking well, of sad stories, a yeah. sad story. It's kind of crazy. It's heroic and sad. So. This week, September 22nd in 1975, uh, there was a, an assass- assassination attempt against President Gerald Ford. And um, the person that really is credited with thwarting the attempt and saving his life was actually a gay person. And the kind of aftermath kind of ruined his life, actually. So um, September- was, he, was he out or are you getting to He was not, yeah. So basically what happened is uh, President Ford was in San Francisco, so a lot of people like, oh, we want to see him. And he was coming out of his hotel, and across the street there was a big crowd waiting for him to come out and see him. And this lady, she had a gun, and so she pulled her gun up, and she— Was sh- that Squeaky Fromm? Is that the one? No, so this was—I think that was the one in Sacramento— so this lady was uh, Sarah Jane Moore. They tried to shoot him twice while he was in California? Yeah, so what happened is two and a half weeks before this, he was in Sacramento, and some lady, she had a gun, and she uh, threatened to kill him, but she didn't have it well, loaded. She was insane. You know who she was, right? She was a Manson. Yeah, yeah she was Charles one of the Manson, Manson girls. Yeah. Wait, so why were they trying to kill I mean, So crazy, that lady was trying to kill him that. because he was, she was very environmentally, you know, she felt he didn't care about the environment. So that happened two and a half weeks before this. He's in Sacramento. That happens. So then two and a half weeks later, he's in San Francisco, comes out of his hotel. And this lady, she had a loaded gun. And so she pulls her gun up, and she actually shoots at him. And the only reason she missed, she was actually a very good uh, gunshot. She had just purchased the gun that morning, and the sights were off. She didn't sight it in. So she shot at him, and it missed. 
and she dropped it, and then she pulled it up to shoot him again, and Oliver Sipple was standing near her, and he saw her raise her arm. So he lunged at her and, like, th- like went to grab her arm and throw it down, and she shot, and it missed President Ford, but it hit a taxi driver. He survived. Oh. But pretty much if, if, you know, it could have very well hit him and killed him if it wasn't for Oliver Sipple. If Sipple. were a taxi driver. Yes. <laughs> so... um. Come to find out, this guy is a Vietnam War hero. He was he was a Marine in Vietnam Simple. War. Simple, yeah. Was he a Secret Service agent, or he was no? He was he was senator. there because he, he was lived in San Francisco, wanted to see President Ford. He was just an innocent crowd member. Yeah. So ever the media, the Secret Service, the media went crazy for this guy, and he was like, "Look, if I wouldn't have done it, somebody else would have. I don't want to be in the news, whatever." He was like, because he was gay, but he was. Um, Pretty much. So he was from uh, Michigan, working class family. He was pretty much closet. He, you know, he went into the military, went into the Vietnam War, came back, um, and then moved to San Francisco. Yeah. So he actually uh, he went to New York for a bit. He met Harvey Milk. Ended up in San Francisco. So in San Francisco, he was a political activist. He was very active. He campaigned for Harvey Milk. He was just volunteered for all these LGBT causes. Very active in the the gay rights fight but publicly he was very closeted and so when this happened he was like look i don't want any press he wouldn't return any of the press's phone calls anything like that um so the media goes crazy they're like this vietnam war vet just saved president ford everything um and harvey milk was like this is too much of an opportunity for the gay community like so what happened is Harvey Milk and another gay activist, they phoned the San Francisco Chronicle and said, this guy's gay. And so the San Francisco Chronicle ran a story, spread like wildfire, all these other media outlets, uh, you know, they ran the story. And immediately, like his family disowned him. So his brother and his father were auto workers in an auto plant, or they were auto plant workers. They got bullied at work. His mother's like, we're done with you. Never going to have anything to do with you again. And and he knew that. That's why he, he didn't want any of this. He wouldn't return the press's phone calls. And so within a couple of days of them running the story, he sued the San Francisco Chronicle. He sued several um, other newspapers and other publishing houses. And... Um, for what, what was the basis? Like, uh, trying to deny that he was he like was his gay. right to privacy. Oh, right to so privacy. and so, this actually generated a huge debate on freedom of press versus right to privacy. And so, this went through the court. So, this happened in '75, and it didn't end in the court system until 1984. Um, and what happened was, every court either dismissed the case or ruled against him because they're like, "This is freedom of the press." And it went to, like, a Supreme Court of Appeals in California. And in May of 1984, they said, look, you were this was a big story. You were gay. It was part of the story. We're ruling in favor of the Chronicle. So, um, Do you agree with that? You know, I kind of – well, I, mean, I don't know about the court cases. I, I, I feel like this guy did have his right to pri- – I, I think it was wrong of Harvey Milk. And I couldn't really find yeah, anything on – because he was a very adamant supporter of Harvey Milk's, he campaigned for him when he was running for the. But Board Harvey of Milk was a politician who knew. Yeah. An opportunity well, and and his thing was, benefit. the reason Harvey Milk did this, and there was another gay activist that did this, is he said, "This is just too much of a golden opportunity for us to say, gays do this stuff too. We don't just loiter in bathrooms, and we don't like aren't just a bunch of child molesters like this guy saved the president's life and one thing that really um uh irked harvey milk was after it came like president ford never thanked him when this happened and harvey milk made a big deal about it publicly he's like he didn't do he didn't thank him because he was gay and so president ford did um send after that after there was publicity about it he sent a three sentence thank you i'll be forever grateful for what you did uh sentences that's what you get three sentences yeah for saving and it really was so this lady 
she had actually called like she had had made several threats against him and she said if i'm ever around him i will kill him and even that day she said tomorrow i'm gonna like uh she called like the secret service or called somebody and she said look i'm gonna try to kill him tomorrow and the, the day before they had like interviewed her and they said well we can't really hold her on anything and she bought the gun and she had she had guns of her own i don't know why she didn't use her own gun but she had guns of her own and they think if she would have had her own gun that she would have been successful but she bought that gun that morning and the sights weren't right yeah. and um well there's a whole debate still to this day about amongst the gays even that if you know someone's gay it happens with politicians the most probably is it right would it benefit the whole gay cause for gay equality yeah to out them or is that person allowed to come out on their own and maybe they don't ever want to come out but that argument is still going on especially for politicians because there's so many <laughs> positive politicians well to me it's a personal choice i mean i do feel you know the stance of most people in the gay community is like please come out because if you know people like just as, as an average everyday person if if people know they might not be okay with the gay concept, but they'll be okay with, oh, I know Kendall and I like him, so of course, you know. Um, but I think it should be up to the person because this guy probably knew if my family finds out. And so this poor guy, his family disowned him, and then some people say, well, over time they, you know, kind of relented a little bit. But by relenting, apparently his mom did speak to him again, but she said, don't ever bring anybody around here friends or boyfriends and then when his mom passed away the father and brother were like you're not allowed at the funeral so i mean even though they may have like spoken to him at some point and i you know i mean he he knew where he grew up and his father and brother got bullied at work after this was public and so that's probably what he wanted to try to prevent and so i agree it shouldn't have been anybody's decision but his own and he was very adamant he he, it seemed like he was a pretty humble person as well because he said, look, if I wouldn't have done it, somebody else would have. Yeah, she already like sh a small town Midwestern. Yeah, and he said, look, somebody else already sh – or she already shot. We all heard it. Somebody else would have – but nobody did. Nobody else grabbed her arm. But um, he was just like, look, I don't want – and he wouldn't return any reporter's phone calls or anything like that. And so um, I think it should have been his choice. I mean I think they made a decision for him. And I mean – not to get any the media is shady, uh, shady, shady though. In two thousand, oh, and they just want a story. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, and they don't care if it ruins your life. In two thousand, I think fourteen. So Aaron Shock, who's now finally came out of the closet, he was a gay Republican. Wait, did he come out? Yes. What? And you haven't, you don't know his story? All these pictures that come out with him, well, his nudes know. leaked, and he was tipping. Um, gay strippers and Who, who's there? Oh, yeah. When did this happen? Because he had I, his hand down the pants. I of, was just listening to oh, an article about him the other day that he got uh, he was, he got uh, acquitted or whatever. Acquitted, yeah. Wait, oh, who is this guy? Aaron Shock. He was a Republican. You don't know Aaron Shock? Come on. He was Single, on the cover. hot, like fake tan. He was on the cover out. of Men's Health. Magazine. Like everyone knew he was gay, like, but he shirtless. wouldn't come out. Where was he from? Illinois. Illinois. Okay. And he um, voted against gay marriage and voted against anything gay equality at all. So there are all these rumors about... Excuse me, I'm going to be distracted for a bit while I go find these pictures. Woof, let me Google. Wow, so he got um, a lot of flack for not being out of the closet, which really is his business. It is his However, business. However, he was voting... He voted to constitutionally amend the Constitution to ban same-sex marriage and voted against um, LGBT protections, all that kind of stuff. So in, like, 2014, he had gone to the White House congressional picnic... In a very stereotypically gay outfit, he had white pants. He had a hot pink gingham shirt on, a blue belt, and people were like, "Ooh!" And Politico put on the website, and I think the headline was even, "This is what Aaron Shock wore to the congressional picnic." And there was no article; it just showed a picture. You click on the link, and it showed a picture of him. And I emailed the. It's the only time I've ever done this to a but publication. I said, "What are you insinuating? Yeah, this is not a news story." And also, that also says, if they're insinuating that he's gay, it's like, then that says, like, oh, straight people can't, it confines us to boxes. Like, it's like, oh, can a straight person not do, what if a straight person is like, I want to be a little colorful? Right. It was wrong on many so different many levels. levels. So it's just, they thought they could get a little story about the gay guy. And this is recently, it's 2014. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the the media was begging him to come out, but why? And that's the thing, because they want a story. Like, they yeah, and it's story. like, who cares? Yeah. And the gays within the same community, I mean, now you can see on any time a celebrity comes out, if you read the comments, Lord, if you're brave enough to read social media comments um, and still be able to sleep at night, it's like, well, he could have come out 10 years ago, or where was he during the so-and-so fight five years ago? It's like, geez, yeah. it's hard for... <laughs> yeah. Did you come out? Is that the first thing you could say? Exactly. I'm gay? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, that's what happened to, I mean, uh, what's his name? Kevin Spacey, right? I mean, he was, I mean, he got a lot of flack for the way he came out. I mean, he didn't come out till he was being. Well, he was uh, forced out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, uh, so he wasn't out and then kind of. No, guy, and so, I mean, he actually had a pretty tragic, I mean, he did have some issues after the Vietnam War, uh, physically and mentally. After this happened, it really put him on a downward spiral, and he actually he, it's yeah. It seems like he just had a very rough time after that. He actually died at a very young age of forty seven. They found him in, in his apartment. He so he had a lot of problems with alcohol after this. They found him dead in his apartment. They assumed he was dead for days, and he was next to a bottle of Jack Daniels. And so he just, um, yeah, it was tough because I mean. Yeah, and him, I, I don't think he was trying to be a hero either. He literally, I think it was, it well, happened. Instinctive. And, and it, he was, it was in the instinctive. military. Yeah, and I think, like, he saw her pull that gun, and he just lunged toward her. It happened in an instant, and he was like, look, I don't want any press over this. I don't want a big deal. Other people made that decision for him, ruined his family life, and it just... Um, and you know what's kind of sad about this is I didn't even know who this guy was until I started researching for topics for this week. And so yeah. it it just makes me think like, I mean, and, and so Harvey Milk's thing was too, you know, the reason the White House didn't, you know, thank him was because he was gay or whatever. And I don't know, you would think like maybe people would have known who tried to or who saved you know, Gerald Ford's life if he was that close to an assassination. Because that was in the 70s. It wasn't like 150 years ago. Um, I don't know. So it's just kind of sad that this guy's name is kind of lost to history in yeah. my opinion. But I would say he has been mentioned in a couple of different, like, radio broadcasts and a couple different, like, movies. But um, in late 2018 Warner Brothers said they are going to make a movie about mm. this guy. I've never heard of him. And so I had never even heard of him either. And so I tried to Google this movie and apparently like I found a couple articles saying it's in development, so I don't know if they're going to make it or not, but they did announce in 2018 that they want to make a movie about this guy. So, so hopefully they bought the rights. Well, that'll be yeah, that'd be an interesting movie to watch yeah. for sure. And yeah. you know, bringing back to I mean, it's crazy how all these minorities, whether they be uh, LGBT or people of color, like get lost in history. I mean, there was the movie that came out with, uh, last year with the uh, three black women who helped kind of launch the um, the NASA. Yeah, into the, when weren't they part of the, the launching yeah. into the, uh, to the moon or wherever? I mean, so actually, I just saw something this week on Facebook that apparently they're going to be honored with something like a plaque or a monument or something down at uh, Space Center. Well, the lady that's the main woman of that, she, I think she just turned 102. Like oh, two get out. Ago. No way. Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's just mm, crazy like that, that uh, like, I mean, those names, significant people in history just kind of get lost to... I know, and, if, and like, I didn't even watch the movie. I watched part of it, but, I mean, just the way they were looked at, like, you're a woman. But like, sometimes it takes time. Like, a few weeks ago, we talked about Marsha Johnson. Mm -hmm. Marsha Johnson was not really talked about in any widespread manner. No, and they didn't even want to investigate her years. death when she died. I mean, right. yeah. The, the last few years, they started talking about Marsha P. Johnson... Part of it is they want to put a face. They want a Rosa Parks to a movement, and she's convenient, although she was never as involved. She wasn't even there for the riot. She gave an interview, Stonewall Riots we're talking about, uh, to where she was – in the interview, she's like, well, I wasn't there for the riot. I showed up like an hour later, and it was still messy. Yet the media's made her – yeah, the face of the. Stone and I remember that when I was researching, because there was conflicting evidence. People were like, "She was one of the first ones there," and she's like, "No, I had to like go there once I found out it happened." Well, look at Harvey Milk, who is considered the gay Martin Luther King. Today, San Francisco dedicated a new terminal, the Harvey Milk Terminal. Until that movie came out, no straight people knew who, knew Mark, who Harvey, who Harvey was. Milk was. I agree. It took forty years for him to become a mainstream person. Yeah. 
and then the movie came out. And it even was though he movie. was like murdered in office, and so you'd think like even if he was, you know, if he had served a normal term and you know died naturally years later, that it's like no, you'd think he would have been a household name because he was murdered in office, like while he was at work. You know, somebody yeah. went in and. But I mean, well, I mean. Yeah, he was a council person, right? I mean, so yeah, yeah. And he wasn't even the first, you know, elected LGBT person to. Uh, I mean, he was the first one of a big city, but I mean, he wasn't the first LGBT person elected to, um, elected to office. But yeah, I mean, he gets. But nonetheless, it, it, there's been a rallying call, uh, you know, around him, and you know, rightly so. It's good to recognize heroes. Well, this so. is why people need to, not why they need to, but this is the benefit of people coming out of the closet, is because. The entertainment industry, for example, is full of gay people out gay. Now they're out. Before, they were not really out. But you have screenwriters and you have producers, makeup people, all this kind of people pushing probably the Oliver Sipple story. Stories like that to where if you're not out, you would never bring that up because right, yeah. why is this guy wanting to, us to make a movie about a gay guy? Yeah. So just being out is a voice to say, well, let me tell you about this guy, Oliver Sipple or Harvey Milk or whatever. It, but it goes it, back to you can only do that when you're ready or else right. you're not going to be prepared for the backlash that right. comes. It's important to be out. I mean, you're, the more folks that are out, the more yeah. visible you are. I mean, and, and to that regard, if we could switch topics to... <laughs> Fine. Uh, unless you had something else. No, I'm good. I mean, so I'm going to talk about Modern Family, right? And so Modern Family gets a lot of credit because they had these two out people then they this so the show debuted in september 23rd 2009 that this you know this gay couple that became household names right and so because of their their presence on screen you had a lot of folks start to change their minds about gay people uh and gay couples and same-sex marriage and whatnot so uh again so this, so this show uh debuted in september uh 2009 it was kind of this mockumentary style uh tv show uh if in the same vein as like parks and rec and uh yep. and, the and the office and so so they had that where they kind of break the fourth wall get, right and yeah so, i don't get all that that what? that like rash of weird Mockumentary, Do- mockumentary style. Shows. Well, it's just kind of inviting. And they never explained who's doing the documentary. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was weird <laughs> kind of way to story tell. I mean, why, it's not, it's like, why are you in my living room again? It was something different, but it was like, yeah. uh, it, well, it was in the vein of all the reality TV shows, right? Where you had those uh, confessionals, right? That's what they were trying to to portray is is kind of get that out because what had been popular during in the early part of two thousand the last decade. All those mm. reality TV shows where you'd have those Bad cutaways to the to the <laughs> confessionals, but mockumentary style based on uh, family stories of the creators Christopher Lloyd and Steve Levitan, and eventually, um, you know, they just kept utilizing real life stories, which I think you know not just from the two creators, but also from eventually from the cast members, which made this show really popular and where people could relate. I mean, it's in a, it's about to start its last and final season, the eleventh season, uh, and uh, and yeah, so it, it's become popular. Why so popular again? Because it, it's relatable, and it followed the lives of three unconventional couples uh, that were bound together by by being a family. So you've got the Pritchetts. So you've got this old conservative uh, character <laughs> Jay, who was played yeah. by Ed O'Neill, and he was married to uh, his Al second Bundy. wife, yep. uh, which is a spicy Colombian uh, Gloria, which was played by Sofia Vergara. The breakout star of the show. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, yeah, she's she in 2017. She was the highest paid actress, uh, TV actress. So yeah, she definitely she went from playing small Her parts. Her son, by the way, in real life. Cute. Well, he's in that shampoo commercial. Oh, let me yeah. Google him. Their, right their son. Uh, We're gonna pause so we can all Google. <laughs> they had they had actually two sons. Their first son Manny, uh, and then and then they eventually had a later son, which was another kind of uh, uh, plot twist, like in, in their in the middle of their uh, seasons where they and Gloria wound up pregnant, uh, and so that was a, a, a nice twist. Then you had the Dumfies, so you had the cool in quotes cool dad um with the super type a mom so you had claire uh played by julie bowen and phil ty burrell and their three kids Haley, alex and luke and then you had the pritchett tuckers which was the gay couple uh so you had this uber type a gay uh, who was mitchell played by uh jesse tyler ferguson and the artsy gay cam who was also i think another breakout star uh and and then they had an adopted daughter lily uh and you know i think you know 
that couple, so Mitch and Cam, I mean, they became, I mean, they're an iconic couple, I would say, uh, in terms of, of television, because um, they they played the parts really well. Tyler Fer Jesse Tyler Ferguson is, at his, is a gay man in real life. Uh, Eric Stone Street, who plays Cam, is not a gay man, but he has played that um, character so uh, flamboyantly that uh, people fell in love with him. They loved it. Like, one of the first scenes that they had in that show where... Um, they just adopted their, their daughter. They're bringing her home. And basically he reenacts the scene from the Lion King. Like he's like, uh, like he's raising up his daughter. Like, you know, in the they Lion used King, that scene Simba. in a lot of the advertisements before the show came out. Yeah. And there was so much buzz around him because he was, it was a hilarious scene that I think that got a lot of people. Yeah. Watching. It, it was over the top. And I mean, so early days to get some flack, modern family gets some flack for being, you know, play, cam being popular, but playing a stereotype of gay characters. But I mean, how many gay people do you know that are that flamboyant yeah. and over the top? I know but then his partner didn't play like three at this the table. stereotypical. Yeah. I mean, no, right. Yeah. And that's kind of the like, hey, there's a balance. And yes, there are. But he did. Point gays. To me, he did. What? He played the old school prissy. Um, Ouch. Don't touch me. I'm not comfortable with this. Mm. Uh, Wasn't into sports. But that can just be uptight. I mean, I mean but that's uptight is the word I'm looking for, which is been a gay, gay stereotype in cinema but they had his you know his sister was just up as uptight right i mean yeah claire in the in the movies or in the tv so show. um for me like you know i don't watch much tv but a lot of people that i know that have talked about this show and the reason they like it is they're like this is like what the real world is like like where you have oh dad's dating or married to a woman younger than i am and like he's got these kids that are the same age as my kids right you know the, the gay brother it's just like this is the american family right where it's like non it's just up in the air right like yeah, everybody this, yeah yeah which is it, why the show was modern family yeah and they weren't these like stereotypical you know full house built you know right. cosby yep. show things where that you start with the problem and everything is resolved at the end i mean they played out uh, storylines and plots. I mean, Glorious Pregnancy, uh, Mitch and Cam trying to find, uh, uh, trying to adopt a, a second child, uh, and then the kids growing up. So the three kids growing up, or all all five kids growing up. I mean, you you saw them, and that you you look you look at stories now about Modern Family, and a lot of it's how those kids have grown over over the last ten mm -hmm. years. Yeah. You know, what makes me feel dirty is that when yeah. I met Luke. Yeah, he was. And now look at Luke. Uh, well, Paul, see you all can Google. Yeah. Well, wait. Who, who? He's one of the Luke kids. Luke is like started out like nine. Yeah. Now he's probably he's 20. twenty in real life. And yeah, I looked up his age because I was like, Get oh, he's kind of cute. Count. And then I was like, oh, he was born in nineteen ninety eight. Oh my god, we were out of that's high like school by then. I Jesus. Know. That's why I was like, oh, that's <laughs> he uh, legal that's man? not good. But he's twenty, so he's legal. So it's not all. But anyways, yes, he he. Uh, god, uh, I guys. guess uh, you know how I like him young, uh, in their twenties. That is that that young. Twenty pounds, <laughs> right? So, but they get they again. They they were real life. They weren't you know Leave It to Beaver type plot lines, which is is what made them go a long way. Um, they had okay. realistic sure. situations, like you noted, Tony. They had the the exes, right? The story of the exes, because um, they would bring back um, uh, Claire and um, and 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 Mitch's mom, or uh, who is Jay's ex-wife, so they, they, which was played by Shelley Long, they'd bring her back. Uh, you had the the children growing up and kind of the challenges of, of you know dealing with school and the peer pressure and the bullying and and puberty and all those sorts of things. And then you had these adoptive parents, so they were all storylines that people could relate to. They also had big themes too, which were kind of groundbreaking if you think about it. So they embraced a lot of technology, which seems kind of silly to say, but they when the iPad was mm. first coming out right uh, in 2009 you know they had an episode where phil was like obsessed with getting an ipad and he got it which everyone in the country could relate to because there was this new gadget the ipad and we all wanted it so it was just kind of watching phil get it and you know the whole the whole uh, excitement he had around it uh was a, a thing they also had which was again i kind of scoffed when i when I, I remember reading about the episode when it came out but they they had a whole episode that was revolving around using facetime like the whole every all the episode was using facetime uh on the either their computer or on their phones which was an an interesting way to tell a story so they get credit for doing those sorts of things uh they also embraced trends again which is why people i think could relate promposals were a big thing and so they had okay. episodes talking about those things getting into college uh flash dances were a big thing remember how those were all youtube viral youtube videos and they had an episode about that so um again things people could relate to the other thing i would say that folks were 
being educated on, maybe it's not being able to relate to, was just same-sex couple issues, right? So mm. in 2009 is when you started to hear or read and see in the news the the big ga- uh, the headlines about you know, same-sex marriage and those sorts of things. And so you had these, you had Mitch and Cam kind of going, being in love, uh, being a, a relatively normal, normal couple. couple yeah. yeah, and yep. so uh, so you got to see all of that. You got to see their their yeah, and they weren't like like these, you know. Like glamorous, hard body. They're like two normal people. Like yep. Cam's a little overweight. Like yeah, yeah. And they were boring. I mean, they were. They yeah. would. They kind of fussed about their boringness. Which yeah, yeah. You know, if you've been in a in a relationship for a longer than a year, yeah, you get boring after a while, right? And you get comfortable with that, which is okay. Uh, but they they kind of introduced that, which I think a lot of people yep. just assume if you were you, know, you were. If you were gay and a couple, you were just constantly having orgies and that sorts of things. Exactly. So <laughs> these guys were like, "No, we're we're boring. We can." Get there. And there was one scene which I remember that they were uh, going out. The their niece had just turned twenty one, and so they went to the bar with her, and you know they're they're trying to dance, and they're doing this like the single ladies dance, and then these younger, and so they're in their, <laughs> yes, their late thirties, yeah. early forties, and then these young twenty something gays come in, and they're you know, and they're like, uh, yeah, so the they're new, like, oh my gosh, yes, we're old. So. Well, when the show started. You still couldn't be out if you were in the military. Right. You still couldn't get married. Right. Right. So by the time they've been on until the time it ends, you've seen this whole huge kind of transition. Of and I think just culturally, you know, not only like legally as far as like being in the military or whatever, it's just culturally like 10 years later. Well, you got to see years. this couple like react to things that were happening in, in our lives. Right. I mean, so uh, you got to see a couple. So it started in 2009. Same sex marriage starts to become legalized in 2013. Right. And yeah. So you start to see like you've, you've grown to love this couple as a, as a fan of the show and you get to see them react to the news that you know the the Supreme Court what the Supreme Court did in yep. overturning these cases and their excitement and their joy and now you get to see that they finally get to get married and so everyone was along with their journey with that so so my only because I I don't watch a lot of TV but I did see uh, one of these episodes and it was the one where Cam and his husband are out at a bar they're having a few drinks I think they were with some friends. And this pretty good-looking lady, she was, like, in her 40s, like, across the bar. She's kind of giving Cam the eye, and he's like – and so, of course, his husband's like, go for it. So he's like, okay. So he goes and starts flirting with her. She's like, we should hang out sometime. He's like, yeah, let's hang out sometime. So he's like, oh, my God, we're going to hang out. So he goes through the whole house and takes all the pictures down of him and his husband and everything. Because he's trying to prove to his husband that That he's straight. passes straight. Oh, yeah, yeah, he passes straight. So anyways – they hang out a few times, right? They're, like, hanging out a few times, whatever. And then she's like, hey, I have to, like, get your advice on something. I met this guy. Like, what do you think? And he's like, <gasps> he's so offended that, like, we've been, like, hanging out. And you're asking me about another guy. And she's like, but, you know, like, yeah, you're gay. And he's like, Ugh. and so he was so offended. He thought she had no idea that she was interested in him. And she and she's like, of course I knew you were gay. <laughs> it's like the big excitement and the big letdown. That was like me waiting for my interview. It didn't happen. <laughs> oh, now I'm sad again. But so it was oh, a, assault to the world. <laughs> it was a well-received show, right? <laughs> so rated very well in early days. You had some breakout stars like Vergara, uh, Sofia Vergara. Like I said, one of the highest paid actresses that are out there on TV. They won a number of Emmys. Uh, Eric, Stone, uh, Eric Stone Street, Ty Burrell, and um, uh, Julie Bowen all won two Emmys each. Uh, and so, and they also won five times for Outstanding Comedy Series Emmy Award, so, which was really great. Uh, it was a popular show. I mean, I, I think, I don't know, my family members, I, I think, felt more comfortable with because I came out to them in 2009. I think oh, okay. or 2008. I think they started when they started to see that show. They started to, I think, relate. Okay, you guys, you're so you're not out at the bars all the time. Like you might be like yeah, yeah. And Cam, uh, Michelle during 20 uh, the 2012 campaign, Michelle Obama and Ann Romney cited you know, this uh, Modern Family is one of their their favorite TV shows. Uh, but it's coming to an end. Like I said, that wait, we're not going to talk about the petition. What was the petition? So they. Gays, once it became very popular, a lot of the gays were like, okay, but we're even portraying them as not a, quote, normal couple. Like, all the couples on every every single episode kiss. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then, oh. And the gays, it took several seasons. I want to say fourth or fifth. There was a petition, even, to let Mitchell and... Cam kiss. Cam kiss, yes. And when they finally did, it was a huge deal. 
and they couldn't talk about their sex life for a while. So the the that's idea actually was a good like, point because yeah, go ahead. No, that's a, kind of a good point because it's like that's them putting them in a box. Like, oh, you can be gay, but not not too fully gay. gay. Yeah, and it's like which is a theme throughout being gay. Yeah. Since being gay, right? It was exactly. A thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't be too gay. Just yeah. don't be gay. Just in don't front rub of me. it in my you face. You can be yeah. gay. Just don't. don't but be if gay. I can't rub it in your face, that's half of my what we can do in bed. Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> you want to rub it in your butt? Hey. Last season starts. Uh, last season starts on September twenty fifth. Again, I think the show is going to go down as having been a key player in changing the perception of LGBT people. Um, you know, especially with Mitch and Cam. Uh, I, I think they're going to go like a uh, Lucy and uh, 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 Desi like couple. Like they're going to be an iconic couple when we when it, when it's all said and done. Like, and they they've been invited to people's homes and they help normalize what it's like to be gay. And it's been a whole zeitgeist cultural thing to where when they started they weren't even being portrayed as normal gay people on tv in 2009 right and when it goes off the air the complete even in that time frame the complete journey of what gay people are allowed to be has changed so much i think that's going to be its legacy of yeah, I mean, I would watch that show. I hadn't watched it in a while, so I picked it up recently. But everyone, especially the first few seasons, it was like every show. I was like, I'm not crying, like they, because they were just, they had good storylines, and yeah. especially the ones with, like Mitch and Cam, like, because I, I could relate to that, like now. And so it was one of those things that I was like, oh, that's, that's a nice place to be. And so, and that other people can look at that and be like, hey, that's, uh, that can be me. Uh, and I do think this is important because. Um, First of all, I do feel it's important for like shows like this because if you're some small town kid, you know, and you're like, oh my God, like we talked about this on the It Gets Better, you know, episode. If you're from like some small town Texas or Kentucky or whatever, and you see that, it kind of gives you like a beacon of hope or whatever. And then also like the organization Glad, I'm, I'm very glad that it exists because, pardon the pun, you know, we talk a lot about. You know, you can do whatever you want in the courthouse, but I mean that doesn't change public perception and things like that. Whereas, right, if you're you know, be like you and... know, we're glad probably was involved in, you know, let them kiss, let them you know show affection, let them do like be a bit more normal. I remember having discussions of like, yes, for people that don't know, glad is like a gay lesbian media organization, whatever. Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation? Or yeah, I think so, yeah. Defamation, maybe? Yeah, we but basically their scatting. thing is, Anti-scat? Not, like, not it's like, um, we want gays to be incorporated in pop culture. Like, yeah. Well, I remember having discussions of, you can't for, it's kind of dangerous, say same-sex marriage had passed in 1980. That would have been way, there would have been even more of a backlash, I feel like. Yeah, then I agree. Then probably a constitutional amendment would have passed. Or you would have seen a much bigger spike in... Yep gay hate crimes um, than it was maybe if it had happened in 2014. And there could be a whole argument of what does it matter? Or like, why are we waiting for the right time? Yeah, It's not that we're waiting. It's that sometimes you yeah. don't want to push it. That argument could be said about Roe v. Wade too, because when that came out in uh, around 72, those conversations, like it was way ahead of its time. Yeah, And I think, the conservative movement at the time latched onto that and they still are not over it. Right. Still. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's still a huge issue. I think a bigger issue because it passed in the early seventies. Um, so the last thing I would say on, on, on this thing is just like, I, I know personally, like it, it normalized it. Cause I think when, when people found out, especially at work that I was, that I was gay, uh, they, they would say, Oh yeah. Like Mitch and Cam. And so, you know, Eric Stone Which one Street, of these Mitch, which one of these well, Cam? Well, that's what Eric Stone Street said. You know, he was asked if, if the show made an impact, if Mitch and Cam made an impact. And uh, he says the fan thanked him for his portrayal, uh, on modern family because he was nervous when the guy was nervous when he came out to his family. But his, you know, his mom just quickly asked, "So who's Mitch and who's Cam?" So I mean, you yeah. could argue that you know that's a little bit like stereotypical. But I, I think the fact that people are like, "Oh, okay, I can see how this gay relationship can work out." You're like Mitch and Cam. I mean, that's that's a huge like these guys should be really proud. I think of what what they put out. There. So two tidbits. I'm sure everybody knows this, like our listeners. But you know, in real life, Mitch was the gay one and Cam was the straight one. Mitch is from Montana. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, that. Is the show. 
No, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Oh, really? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. The, His parents live in the Montana. The ginger. Mm-hmm. Well, so that's Modern Family. So uh, speaking of modern things, so before we hop on over to your topic, Kendall, a word from Economy Works. Did you know that the modern unemployment rate? No, I, that was a bad transition. Did you know the unemployment rate is below 4% in the U.S.? If you are trying to hire someone, then you probably already know that because you're having trouble finding quality candidates. Economy Works is here to help. Don't have time, energy, or the resources to hire? Economy Works is ready to help you write job descriptions, find candidates, review resumes, and phone screen candidates. Let the Economy Works Talent Network help you do more with less. Economy Works. When we work, the Economy Works. Find out more at economyworks.com. So, Kendall. Okay, now let's talk about butt sex. Bring us home. Specifically, Ooh, what? What? <laughs> specifically Kentucky butt sex. Ooh, yummy. Redneck butt That's sex. That's the, the blessed, the best kind, huh? That bluegrass, the bluegrass. Blue ass. Woof. Butt Ooh, sex. If it's blue, I don't know. So, on September 24th, 1992, the Kentucky Supreme Court struck down the law criminalizing consensual sodomy between same-sex partners saying that it violated the equal protection of laws and the right to privacy. So this law specifically dealt with the gays only. So the straights could have sex, butt sex, anal sex. Mm -hmm. The gays, it was only illegal for the gays since 1972 to be the ones putting their penises up each other's Wait a minute, so... Kentucky had laws that discriminated between straight people could have, like, anal sex. but gay So, in 1860, yeah. there was a law saying nobody could have sodomy, anal yeah. sex, at all. They didn't mention anything about oral sex or rimming or whatever. But Can you imagine rimming in the 1800s? Well, yeah. we'll get to that later. <laughs> I mean, I'll talk about any decade. I'm sure you <laughs> So in 1860, they said it was unnatural sodomy. Um, You couldn't do it with a man or a woman. But it was specifically relating only to the penis and the butt. In 1972, someone challenged that and say, Straight people can do it. Yeah, why could we not have butt sex, basically? And they said, okay, we'll change the law. Now straight people can have butt sex, but the gays can only not have butt sex. Which is sex. weird. Why would straight... I mean, I know some people want to do it, but it's like... Well, I mean, when you wear out the front, you have no I place know. to go but the back. Uh, so... What does that mean? So in 1972, they said, okay, yeah, sure, okay, straighties, you can put the penis up the woman's butt, but two men can't do it. And not only that, two men, it's illegal for two men to have oral sex or to rim each other. They called it anal, oral to anal okay. sex. So basically that takes all the, I mean, what fisting is the only thing left. Hello. Right. They probably, that was probably considered under sodomy. Um, so 1860 to 1972, no one could have butt sex. In Kentucky. Yes. In 1972. Onward. Yes. Straight until people, all the way 1992, yeah. it was illegal for gays to have any sex at all. How did the gays? No, oh, that was cope? actually 1974. I'm sorry. How did the gays cope? They just went to the truck stops that they uh, along. Well, they had to be very. I forty. Well, secretive about you know it. Even yeah, more so. you know what's crazy about this? When we talked about the Lawrence v. Texas, up until it was uh, illegal or legalized, a couple of dozen cases a year, like happened in Texas, and I'm like, who the like? Why the fuck are these people? Getting arrested for this. I mean, what's the deal? But whatever. Go ahead. Well, the 1860 law. See, back then they thought specifically sodomy was extra super unnatural between any gender. Even to where, and it didn't cover oral sex between men because in 1909 they had caught two black men giving oral sex to each other. Prosecuted them under the law. And then the courts, it got to the courts and the courts were like, no, it's, oral sex is not, is not covered by this law saying sodomy is illegal. And they didn't change the law then? I think I saw that movie, by the way. Oh, God. Da, 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 da. Um, so in 1974, the legislature, because there had been so many gay groups saying, like, this is unfair. It's one of those things to where you fight for a right, and they're like, okay. <laughs> and then it gets worse. Yeah. You know, the solution is worse. Um, but, and this is the case of Kentucky versus Wasson, by the way, in case I didn't say that. In 1986, a 23-year-old nursing student, Jeffrey Wasson, left 
a Lexington gay bar called The Bar Complex. And he was approached by an undercover police officer while he was going to his car. And the guy started flirting with him, started saying it was entrapment. Yeah, see, and I, I do not agree with entrapment, but that's a whole other story. So they have a 20 minute undercover taped conversation. Oh, then uh, they had cap- uh, cameras on their uh, on their body. Audio, yeah. So it was. Oh, and you know okay. that cop oh, wanted well, it. What, just what are we going to do when we get back to your home? After are you going to grab my nightstick? Jeffrey Wasson what about my invited nine milliliter, him. milliliter, milliliter, milliliter. Oh my God, you are so gay. My <laughs> nine, nine milliliter mil- pistol. Mil- uh, <laughs> millimeter? No, that wouldn't be. Your nine millimeter. <laughs> That'd oh, be like that's really sad. small. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but anyway, so let's get Dad. back to the Kentucky butt sex story, please. Oh, yeah. Well, you were. We were talking about the 9 millimeter. In so in the parking lot, the undercover cop is trying to figure out what exactly we're going to do when we get to your place. So he says all the things we're going to do, and then the he gets did? arrested. Or the... No, the guy, Jeffrey Wasson. Now, 29 people were arrested in that sting. Wait, can I... Can I 29 people were arrested in this sting? Question. You, you, you get arrested just for saying what you're going to do? Yes, which, first of all... How is that that's, illegal? If you ever watch Cops... There has to be a transaction. There has to be money passed yeah. and drugs passed. Why is it that anal sex? That but here's the thing. Can you imagine? Like it's but only it's, crime if you actually have anal sex with the undercover cop. But here's the thing. It's Kentucky, and you have Kentucky cops and Kentucky judges, and it's like they can do what they want until it goes to to, to a certain court. I but, mean, but what did you? I mean, what did the guys say? Like how? I mean, no offense. I mean, okay. Hmm, sorry, mom. Uh, but anal sex, like, how do you talk dirty about anal sex? Like, I'm going to... Well, no, it could have been easy. You know, that whole conversation that almost every two gays have at the end of closing <laughs> time. Are you a top or your bottom? But the thing is, <laughs> well, like... What was the conversation that you and I had? I don't know. You tell me. No, well, I don't remember. You're the, you're the one who loves <laughs> to tell the story. Well, how, how the hell are we going to... What the hell are we going to do back at your place? Oh, that's when you told me you were straight the night I met you. Yeah, that's my point. Anyways, Tony, And you took me back to your apartment, and I was like, you said, you know I'm straight, right? You know I'm straight, right? I said, what the hell are we going to do in your apartment? (laughs) (laughs) And he said, fair enough. And then I split them in half. No, you didn't. (laughs) Actually, you probably could have, and I wouldn't have known. And if you did, I didn't feel anything the next day, so that's not (laughs) a good statement on you. Because you're dead inside? (laughs) Because I'm dead inside. Uh, yes, it's true. Can we please talk about butt sex in please. Kentucky? But Tony has something to say. I interrupted okay, him. Well, I lost my train of thought. I can't remember what I was going to say. Come on, Tony, right there. Oh, no, 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 no. So, what I was going to say is, sorry, is I, I, on your point, like, you know, just agreeing to something doesn't mean you're doing it. Like, I mean, it's one thing to be like, okay, you're hiring me to, like, kill Thomas. Like, you know, but then well, even the money would have to be exchanged, out. whatever. Like, I mean,. It's one thing to be like a hitman murder or something, about entrapment. but yeah, it's like. But I, even still, entrapment. Like, so going back to the privacy case, we were no matter about what earlier, you agree to, he could like, go to his house and be like, "Sorry, I don't like you. I'm not letting like, you in." Like, or he could have been straight, had the undercover cop there and beat his ass because he's like, "You think I'm a yeah?" But, you know what I mean? But but again, well, how is talking about it breaking the law? The act was the one that's thing illegal. I mean, I go back to that privacy case that we were talking about earlier. I'm like. If there's no nothing on the law that says you can't out someone, I mean, there's right, nothing. Exactly. So that's why I'm like, well, I mean, it sucks that, and I agree that people should have their right to privacy, but I don't think there's anything in the law that says you did that. But there's also nothing in the law that says you can't talk about. Gays, I agree until sex. you do, because I you could be a big talker about anything, like I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, but if you don't do it, like you don't break the law. All right, we're debating backwards, 1970s. Anyways, laws. poor Kendall. Right. Thankfully, Kendall is our neglected child of this podcast. He feels he always has to go last. <laughs> <laughs> so, First and then you'll just take over. Yeah. Okay, anyway, butt sex. He's only Kentucky. got a page of notes right. anyway. He's so. right. Oh, God. Picture this, Lexington, Kentucky. Butt sex. Okay, now I'm butt listening. Butt sex, 1986. <laughs> so what's sad is that most of these 29 guys that wanted they didn't to have butt taxes. sex. No, stop. <laughs> um, they just paid the fine, which is an admission of guilt right there. So And the fine was probably a couple hundred bucks. And they it, thought, it was a misdemeanor. It was $500. Yeah, and so they're like, why deal with it? Yeah. And if you don't have the $500, you spend up to a year in jail. But this guy, this well, nursing Back when student, I had that oil and gas money, I would have just paid the fine, too. I'm like, I'm not going to court for this nonsense. Because then you get outed, which we talked about earlier, is a big deal in the 70s. So he was like, no, get me an attorney. I'm taking this to court. Good for him. So the initial Fayette District Court dismissed the charges, uh, and then it was appealed to the Fayette Circuit Court, and they came to the same conclusion. 
And then the state, of course, the state is like... So did he want this to keep going through the courts when they would dismiss the charges? What? No, it would, it would be... He wasn't trying to get it to, like, Supreme Court, if that's what you're saying. He wanted it gone. But the state appealed every single time because it's Oh, like, the state appealed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, because in the Lawrence v. Texas, the guy was like, I'll just pay the fine. And they're like, do not pay the fine. No, there was yeah. no, like... I mean, this is the 80s. There wasn't that sense yeah. of like this could yeah so this guy just wanted to go and the state's the one that kept appealing the state kept appealing because it's their law and they yeah. thought you know yeah we're gonna put this keep this center in jail whatever yeah it, until it went to this the kentucky supreme court the kentucky supreme court ruled four to three another close decision that it struck down all anti-sodomy laws going all the way back to the 1860 law declaring it unconstitutional by finding it violated both the right to privacy and equal protection under the law in the Kentucky kinda, Constitution, not kinda, the U.S. Constitution, obviously. Yeah. So this is a state issue. Yeah. Yet in 1986, the year he was arrested, uh, there was a court case from Georgia that went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court ruled, no, we have the right to specifically have law saying that only gays can't have butt sex, basically. So it's one of those things. The state says one thing, and the federal Supreme says another, Court yeah. says, oh, yeah, it creates this whole sense of But it's crazy to me. Confusion. Like, you would think, if anything, the federal, like the Supreme Court, these people would be a little bit more, I, I don't want to say open-minded, but, you know, like, who gives a fuck what people do behind closed well, when, doors? I when mean, the, the court said... Quote, there was no suggestion that sexual activity would occur any place other than the privacy of Wisconsin. Right, because if, do, if anybody does it in public, it's illegal, I mean, right? And they continue to say that sexual activity was intended to have been between consenting adults, no money was offered or solicited. So it's two men going up. And also, like you said, 23 people were arrested. 29. As, 29 as part of this. Like, that's ridiculous. It... See, this wasn't even the first. These little court battles were going on all over the country. They were actually the fifth state to rule that these anti-sodomy laws were unconstitutional. It kind of makes you wonder why the state, like, did that. Because when we talked about Lawrence v. Texas, which was years later, every time somebody got arrested for sodomy, it was just like, just pay the fine. Yeah, I'll pay the fine. Done with it. So it makes you wonder what the state's agenda was like. Was somebody really wanting to affirm this on the books and they wanted it to go through? Or did somebody really say, I don't... Because, you know, in the Lawrence v. Texas, you know, all the way up the chain, they're like, can you please make the fine a certain amount? Because if you don't, it can't progress and it can never go to the Supreme Court. But Texas before Lawrence had had so many... Like during this time in 1992... Texas was having its own legal battles on the same. But I mean, here issue. in in uh, Kentucky, it makes you wonder who who was pressing this to get through the courts. Like, was somebody on the state side saying, "Let's get this through the courts and make it um, like reaffirm that this is illegal," or yeah. was somebody like, "Let's get this off the books, keep promoting well, states it"? Always, almost always, especially when there's not a big movement saying this law is wrong. They're always going to appeal because it creates too much confusion. If it's upheld, then all of a sudden the law cannot be enforced when probably 80% of the state wanted this law to be enforced. But this was the fifth state actually to rule that anti-sodomy laws were unconstitutional. They cited the other four cases saying, thus our decision rather than being the leading edge of change is but a part of the moving stream. It's crazy that it was Kentucky too. Just... And then it wasn't legal. It wasn't struck down until 2003, Lawrence v. Texas, when they said, "Federally, y'all can put penises up any old booties you want, as long Ooh. as they're 18. Still waiting. <laughs> but some, uh, like we said uh, when we talked about Lawrence v. Texas, some states still have this law on the books. Probably on the books, yeah. Oh, yes, Louisiana, a few years ago, they were arresting gay guys that were cruising at Baton Rouge Beach, which is a little local lake, which is a cruising spot. What is this Baton Rouge Beach? It's just tiny. Like, they, it's it just like a nickname of uh, a little lake, and is they just it? call it. It's a park on the lake, and they call it Baton Rouge uh, what, Beach. What lake? Is it? It's like a. It's not a big lake. It's oh, a man-made. Like, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's a cruising spot because it's a park as well. 
So a few years ago, I'd say probably Ooh, seven years this? ago, <laughs> uh, they were s- way to New Orleans. the sheriff was arresting people using this law that was on the books, the state law saying sodomy is illegal, but it had already been turned over nationally. But they were arresting people. People were spending nights in jail, missing work, all that kind of stuff. And that goes to show that how harmful even these laws, once the Supreme Court, they, they're still being used. Nothing ever happened to the sheriff. Actually, I think it was the police chief. He just said, oops, sorry. Well, it's on the books. Then the state legislature needs to overturn it. No. <laughs> Meanwhile, you have something on your arrest record. And exactly. It your ability to It was expunged, but it doesn't matter because then you're going to be in the paper, especially in Louisiana. They love, I know so many old women that go and see who got arrested. What is oh, it called? I'm the sure, blotter. Yeah. What is it? The, oh, the police uh, blotter. Do you still do <laughs> that? I go to my lo- hometown newspaper every day and see who died, so who got married, and who got arrested. You yeah. are a Sophia. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks but, for almost letting me finish my story. Guys. Oh, you still have more? <laughs> no. So, but it's interesting you say that about the Baton Rouge because this just happened like within the last couple of years in Houston. So, like, not on the Memorial Park side, on the other side. It's a cruising spot? Yeah. Well, no. So there's like this, like, there's this, uh, there's all these like trails that go back by the bayou. And apparently, like, weekday lunches, men will go park in this parking lot and they'll walk back into the woods and mess around. And Wait, where's this? So, like, when you go down Memorial, he wants you to draw no, I'm saying because I'm like I'm running through like along the bayou all the time. When would you say the peak time yeah. is? Like, <laughs> no, okay, so my like across <laughs> Memorial uh, Drive from Memorial Park, oh, there's across. like the picnic yeah, loop yeah, yeah. where they do the biking. Yep. So if you go back past the picnic loop, like you can walk into the woods, basically between there and the bike, and it's all wooded and everything. Yep. So apparently, weekday lunches. Men will park there and they walk back in there and then like meet other men to do whatever to talk to them. About so the police, what are they going to talk about? Our what Lord are they going to do over there, Tony? No, they do. Yeah. So they like the what? police have a sting. And so these police were like undercover and they're like they go back there. And then when guys go back and like proposition, then they arrest them nowadays, like currently. Yes. Yeah, so, oh. so like a year and a half ago, there was this big sting where they were arresting all these people was there, oh, we were and people were sting. like writing to the Chronicle saying like, Dude, there is all this crime in Houston. Do these police have nothing better to do than, like, grown men wanting to get a little action during the day? Like, why are you... No, that's sad, right? Having But it's in public. Well, that's that's the thing. Like... But it's in public, but it's, like, way back in the woods, and it's, like... But, but people are running in, along those trails. I mean, that's not the During way. the day at lunch... No, but some of the women are some. You've got women who are running. But where will there. Tony go if the police? I know. Look, well, I don't I, have a car. And or I, I say would this go there as a uh, a one time, you know, cruiser, right? I one mean, time, like, uh, one yeah, time. Yeah. Well, no. As a <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so yeah, I but I I get it. I mean, yes, the can the resources be allocated elsewhere? But if you're running in the park with your kids or your woman or there's no way kids are ever back there. It is too rough. Tony's trying to defend himself. I have never seen... Tony was No, I, I just so feel like been, these are consenting adults. Back, Tony got a big sting. He knows all no. about what's going on. I want to go back there. But no, these are consenting adults, and it's like... Well, then it, there's Grindr. Find, like, hook up another way. That is like, true. That I mean, is come true. Come on. There's yeah. other ways to do that now. Back, I God, will say... You guys are all for the police. In my, in in my defense... You're for this entrapment. In my defense, 10 years ago, you didn't have that luxury. Or 20, how, before, before 10, oh, sorry. Oh, people have been doing this for probably 30, 40 yeah. years back there. That's what I'm saying. Thirty years ago, you didn't have options. You didn't have grinder. You had classified ads, personal ads. Nowadays, come on, like clean it up, clean it up. Whatever. All right. Speaking of clean it up, let's clean up this podcast. Uh. All right. So, thank you for listening to our podcast. Unless you had something else to say. Anyone no, else? no, All no. Right. Just forget it. Right. You guys love entrapment. You love the police. Uh, whatever. I will say this <laughs> uh, on the, the police. On the police note, like I was at an event uh, sponsored by the LGBT chamber here in Houston. And uh, the, they had the uh, police chief from Houston talking. One, I think that guy's going to run for office one day. But he was very much, I mean, the fact that he was there. In LGBT like what, event, mayor you mean? Or I don't know. He can't, oh, well, he could probably run for mayor. I don't think he could because Sylvester. Well, he'd have to wait till Sylvester was not running. Sheriff. Okay. Or, Sheriff, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I could see City him running council. for something because he, he was President. He was talking like a, like a politician, very anti-Trump, mm-hmm. uh, but very pro-LGBT. And so I, Woof. yeah, I appreciated it. Thank you. He's married. 
Is uh, he cute? Right. <laughs> Two <laughs> different questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can be both. Uh, but yeah, I have to anyways, go to Memorial Park so, now. Sorry. <laughs> you, you might run into. You'll get arrested there. eventually by him. But but my point is like I I he was right to say hey look we're pro LGBT but we also need to make sure that you know not all cop like we're trying to do good stuff in the community and yeah I know there's a lot of controversy about the, not your vote. the the police police officers mm-hmm. and how they act they just, mm-hmm. I, when I see folks like that and I see LGBT like like people police well, officers I'm like they're not and they're my friend all. Lou uh, he's trans and he actually. Uh, he does a lot of advocacy work and stuff, but he actually worked for HPD where he would go in and train the officers on here's, you know, just ha- like pronouns. Here's like, you know, appropriate behavior around trans people, things like that. There was an episode of Will and Grace where they did a training like uh, Jack and Will did a training on how to talk to gay people. But yes, I'm, but my I guess my point being, I'm not trying to give police officers who do bad stuff like a, a, an excuse. I'm just saying that I think they're, they they. Um, they fight the good fight uh, and protect us day in and day out. So, mm. resident Republican. And maybe they shouldn't. Just be kidding. It's true. Cruising us that out in the, <laughs> are arresting us while we're cruising. But anyways, thank you for listening to our podcast and kicking with us this week. A special thank you to the guy who made the enchiladas. Spencer, how was? How do you make the Is that enchiladas? How do you, pronounce it, enchiladas? How do you make the enchiladas yes, in Texas in uh, America? You, you fold and. Texas is its own oh, country. Oh, you fold in the cheese. He was Bro- able to – broken cheese. He was able to successfully fold in the cheese. Wow. Anyone who's watched Shit's Creek knows uh, what that reference is to. Uh, special thing to you. Did you send us that video? Did I fold in the cheese? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With so, the, his mom, him and his mom. Yes. Yeah. And they hated each other. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, just fold it in. They had a in. Really. Yeah, how, was, how did that skit go? She's like, well, you just need to fold in the cheese. And it's like <laughs> – fold, fold in. What does that mean? Yeah. She's I like, don't know how to fold broken sh- cheese. She's like, I can't. Moira was like, I uh, forgot about that. Till she's just, like, I, was like, I can't tell you everything. I've seen this David. before. The one thing? <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay, so Spencer made some good enchiladas, enchiladas, and mom and sister, you'll be proud because uh, Spencer made his own enchilada sauce today, which was very good. So he'll have to make enchiladas for you the soon. Perfect amount of salt. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and he. He marinated the ch- the chicken and pickle juice, so chicken enchiladas. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was wow. good. It's like well, it was I like it was it was like our own Chick Fil A. Anyways, uh, don't Popeyes, Popeyes. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe so you can hear future episodes. Leave us a review. We'd appreciate that. Uh, let us know what give you think. Give us questions. Yeah, give us some questions. Love to answer. Uh, you can give us questions via our website at letstalkaboutgaystuff.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Let's Talk About Gay Stuff. Uh, we've had some uh, fans uh, or listeners, rather, uh, give us uh, some questions via Facebook, so feel free to do that. Uh, you can also uh, hit us up on Twitter at Talk Gay Stuff. Uh, and if that's not your thing, you don't want to do social media, you want to just send us a strongly worded email or a nice email, you can drop us a line at lots, let's talk about gay stuff at gmail.com. Also, live, give our girls at our spoopy podcast a listen because they are hitting episode number 20. And so doing doing good things. They have uh, ventured off into not just talking about spoopy things, but talking about drag queen stuff. And so they are quite entertaining. If you haven't heard those two two boys cackle. Uh, and check out their social media because they have polls about what you want to hear coming up. Polls. Wolf. Oh, wait. Different polls. Wolf. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> P-O-L-L-S. So take a listen. <laughs> so uh, here we are. We're here. We're queer. Get used to it.